Our Blessed Lady, Mary, was not just an ordinary woman. She was a human being just as we are, but to her had been given a great dignity. It was to Mary that God thought fit to send an archangel with the greeting, Hail, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Nor was she an ordinary woman to whom Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out, Blessed art thou amongst women. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? Had any ordinary woman come to visit Elizabeth, no such exclamation would have fallen from her lips. God has always, fittingly, prepared those whom he has chosen. We see that in the case of the prophets, and above all, in the case of that greatest of all prophets, St. John the Baptist. Yet not one of these had so close a relationship to Jesus as she who was destined to be his mother. So Mary was not just an ordinary woman. She was, of course, selected for a great purpose. But it was not Mary who was great. She acknowledged that God was the source of her glory and offered him praise, saying, he that is mighty has done great things to me. But she did not deny that great things had been done to her, which had not been done to others. Now, Mary's place in the church should be obvious. She is the morning star, preceding Christ, the light of the world. The only difference is that all her light is derived from the sun she heralds. By God's eternal decree, Mary has been associated with the highest mysteries of our faith, from being the very instrument of the incarnation of the Son of God, and therefore of our redemption. We have devotion to her, both because of our admiration for her and because of her interest in our eternal welfare. When we honour Mary, of course, we are but honouring Christ in her. Without him, she would be nothing. And the honour we show her cannot displease Christ. But Mary, of course, is not a goddess. However holy she might be by grace, she still remains a creature. 
But for the grace of God, she would have no privileges beyond those of other persons. But she certainly did receive graces that no other woman ever received or ever will receive. In bringing forth Jesus Christ, she brought forth the source of our eternal life. We can never deny that Christ was the principal author of our redemption. But there were many secondary cooperators in that work. Mary cooperated in Christ's redemptive work in a most particular way. In union with Christ, for example, she had her own passion. And Simeon rightly predicted to her under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your own soul will be pierced by a sword. At the cross, she was given us to us as a mother. To all of us, Christ said in the person of St. John the Apostle, Behold your mother. We therefore regard Mary as our spiritual mother, giving her the love and devotion as her sons and daughters. We are called to listen. It is only by listening that we change. Of course, we may listen and stray from Christ's way of truth and life. Eve listened to Satan, disobeyed God, left us miserable and driven from the paradise of God's grace. Mary, on the other hand, listened to an angel, obeyed, and thus through her, the possibility of true happiness has been restored to us by the gift of God's grace. For Mary is the daughter of Zion, who echoed in her heart the longings of the patriarchs and prophets and the hopes of all Israel. She is the poor and lowly servant who trusted in her Lord. May we, who claim Mary as mother, follow her example. In her flesh, she was Jesus' mother. May we, through the power of the Holy Spirit, allow Christ to be born in us. May we present him to the world as Mary presented Jesus to the Magi. In her person, Mary was Jesus' disciple. May we be true disciples of her Son, learning from Jesus to be obedient to the will of our Heavenly Father. In her love, Mary was the servant of her Son. May we love in the way Christ has taught us by offering ourselves as a sacrifice in the service of others. As we journey through this life, may we know Mary's protection and trace in our hearts the pattern of her holiness. Let us then heed her call to prayer and penance and so come one day to enjoy the life of the heavenly city where Mary intercedes as mother and reigns as queen. Amen. <laughs>